Yes, sir, baby. On the radar radio, yo, special guest in the building, Dime a Dozen in the building. Sheesh. Training two out June 10th. June 10th. June 10th. I want to make sure I got the day right. Welcome to the show, my brother. Oop, make sure I didn't smell none of that water. Hey, yeah, it's just water in this cup. I ain't drinking. Yeah, we, we yeah, straight water today. I like the uh, the <laughs> fit, too. The fit, it, it, it goes well with the clouds yeah, and the man. green and shit like that. Yeah, we on go. go Was that green. planned or no? Not at all. And I love when it's not, it's never planned, but it, when it happens, it's, it's always it's always welcome. It's always great. Yeah, man. That's like my, my color right now, green. I've been uh, promoting this whole Ghetto Olympics project thing, so... Geo, Ghetto Olympics, on mm. go, green, green light. You know, I was just sitting here thinking about it. I, before the interview even started, I was about to just go on a rant and just say, like, you know, how I, I appreciate and respect how hard you're going. Oh, thank you. And, uh, you know, your consistency uh, is just, you know, it's very on brand with what I'm doing right now, you know, just with the green, with the mm. being on go, with staying, you know, active. Right. And yeah, man, I'm just happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Of course, I'm happy to have you. I feel like just staying active, I, I don't know. I was, it's funny, I was thinking about this earlier because somebody was like, um, some, well, er, earlier this week when, when we announced that uh, that we uh, we got this new studio that we're going to be moving into soon. Um, thank you, thank you. One of my friends was like, um, are you, he's like, oh, he's allergic to losing. But I, not that that's what I, the point that I got from that, but the, what I got from that was I started thinking about how it's like, it's just consistency, right? right? But then it's also like, when do you, when do you take the moment from the consistency to breathe? You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like I haven't taken that moment to just breathe and soak everything in. Because we're, you know, as you as you know, you know, you're in the same type of time. It's mm -hmm. like you just move from one thing to another to another to another. Right. It's like so you never get the moment. Yeah, you know consistent what I'm level up too. Right. Right. And most importantly, the level up. But you know, I, I feel like on each level, you know, you just find different structures to uh, kind of maintain what you got going on because you're just only gonna get bigger. Only gonna. You know, just expand. Right. <laughs> and that's what, you know what, I, I made the joke because we're, when we're recording this, it's about to be Memorial Day weekend. I'm like, that's what Memorial Day weekend is for. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Saturday through Sunday, if y'all see me out in Brooklyn and it's like 3 p.m. and I'm walking on some block party and I got sunglasses on, you never saw me. <laughs> <laughs> you ne I don't exist. You never saw me. But I'm happy to have you here, man. I'm excited no to doubt. talk about this project. Yes, sir. Um, your story is really interesting. I know, obviously, uh, uh, one of my when I was doing research this past week for this interview and just kind of getting a full grasp of your history and everything that you've really kind of like engraved yourself in in New York culture. Um, obviously, one of the first things that I thought was so cool was you posted the clip of Joey Badass doing that interview, right? Mm -hmm. And I thought it was really cool about how he was talking about it wasn't so much well one it was like obviously the influence that he spoke about that you had on him, mm -hmm. but I thought it was cool about learning how deeply rooted you you've been in the internet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you were there before, well, you were on the internet before a lot of those guys in that era in the early 2010s were uh, were on the internet. I thought that that was dope. Yeah, Soldier Boy voice. Soldier, literally, so, <laughs> literally, I was like, literally saying time as probably a Soldier Boy. Yeah, probably so. Um, I remember Soldier Boy coming out around that time and the whole Crank That Wave. Mm -hmm. uh, YouTube, maybe like 2006, 7, 8, I was like, Running around doing my uh, videos in school, doing parody mm -hmm. videos, doing freestyles in the hallway, connecting with a lot of YouTube uh, guys that have definitely like evolved and become like stars now. Like my guy uh, Timothy De La Ghetto, uh, he went by uh, Traffic uh, back in the day, right? And now he's on like Wild and Now. Yep. He's doing his thing out here. You know, my guy uh, D Pride. His name is uh, Russell now. He switched his name up. D Pride switched his name. Yeah, his name is Russell. Really? Yeah, he still does music and he's doing his thing. He has his fan base. He has his merch. Yeah, man. So it's like from that era, a lot of artists mm. have you know they're still doing their thing. They came up. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm lucky to be of that you know uh, cloth. <laughs> How does it feel when your name gets like you know, in whether it's from that Joey interview or just in general, like how does that make you feel? Kind of knowing that like th all these people have like pretty much you to thank for influence and for kind of being at the forefront of that early wave of like the YouTube days too. It's inspiring, and mostly because I was just a kid. You know, mm -hmm. I was probably not even that much older than a lot of these guys that say they are. Or were inspired by what I was doing, so it was like that's inspiring to me because mm -hmm. at this point we're both 
uh, you know, whoever is inspired, like if they were inspired to do music or, you know, do video, we're both in right. the same, you know, lane. If they're inspired to act because of my pair, uh, my skits, you know, and, and do comedy, you know, we're both, you know, creating in the same world now. So it's an honor for me to inspire and it's an honor to me to collaborate with artists like that. And yeah, that's just, it's dope. Right. Because in, in a way, like, Thinking about that and looking at what you did back then and even how it correlates to what people do now, too. Like, you talk about the skits, right? I mm -hmm. think about um, Booba a hundred times and, the, and like, <laughs> the skits that he be doing with the, with the rappers, you know what right. I'm saying? The car, like, you know what I'm saying? I think about that. And then you think about, like, the music video stuff and how, you know, YouTube is now, once again, like, the go-to place for artists more so than like a soundcloud or another platform like it's kind of it's I, I always say you know we always say like history repeats, repeats itself, itself yeah. and i feel like that time is kind of like in the sense of like the youtube and the pranks and how that kind that time like that was so prevalent and so popular now it's kind of like coming back around where it's like okay youtube is a place where um artists where artists are, are breaking where you know creators and like comedians are being born and like it's not so much you know we had the soundcloud era but then like the soundcloud era kind of turned back into like a, a new youtube era for right. music and shit like that which yeah, i think is cool it's community you know it's like the community always comes back around it's a lot of the same people still in the community but then definitely got new people definitely got new faces mm -hmm. new sounds new create creatives so it's, it's beautiful you know yeah but you know dom's still here <laughs> Dom, is, Dom is still here and Dom is still working. Yes, sir. Because like even like a lot of those people that you said you influenced, you ended up working with down the line too. Yeah. So I thought that that was I th I thought that that was really dope as well. And still and like even with artists that I looked up to, like that's why I say like it's a beautiful thing for me to inspire and then be able to work with these artists because like artists like Fabulous. I was very inspired by Fabulous. I grew up as a gospel rapper. Mm -hmm. Like my first raps were written at like maybe 11 years old and they were like, I grew up in the church. Mm -hmm. So my mom like kind of sheltered me away from like the hip hop, you know, worldly shit as she would say. And uh, <laughs> you know, so Fab, what I could hear on the radio in like little specks of like music I could hear like is what influenced like my real like rap style because I wanted to become a rapper because I seen a gospel rapper perform uh, Shout out to Q the Prophet. I saw him perform and it influenced me to rap, but I didn't have much to take from so uh, Fab Keeping a Gangster was one of the songs I was hearing uh, on the radio. So uh, I made Keeping a Godly like based off of that. <laughs> That's actually mad funny. You know, so it's funny because like now I get to work with Fab. He, you know, he remixed my song That Chicken. So, yep. you know, so all this connecting is like, it's a dope journey. It com everything comes around full circle. Yes, sir, full to circle. To some extent. Yep. And as you kind of like, you know, go into like this new project, because last year you were super consistent, right? You had two projects last year. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the project this year is a sequel, but mm -hmm. there was like a gap, you know, at least at least in like the DSPs, like with the DSP show, there was like a gap where you didn't really put out music for a certain period of time. It was like, what, like four or five years, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, what was that time? What was going on in that time for you? I'm just curious. Um... At least, at least a project. I wouldn't say you weren't putting out music, but like project wise. A project. What was that in between? That was maybe. Let's pop it up. Hip hop and something else. What was that? Let me pop it up right now so we could talk about it. Yeah, because I'm always interested when I see those type of gaps in artists like discography. It was a two piece tape and training. Hmm. Two but I'm sure you got, some, you got some EPs in between, but. Yeah, 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 yeah. Album in between. Yeah. Like, is that. Uh, uh apple music yeah apple music has my album as a compilation for some reason mm. i don't know why so uh crown fried is in between uh two-piece tape and training okay got you so crown fried is 2000 do, they do that i don't know that's so weird but everywhere else is, it's it's an album but crown fried is an album that came out in 2018 i believe mm -hmm. And that had my uh, uh, rest in peace, Capital Steve's. Yeah, rest in peace. Uh, one of his last tracks to, to be heard by the public on there. Um, yeah, so yeah, that chicken, the original that chicken was on that record. So gotcha. yeah, Crown Fried. I mean, so yeah, uh, that took a little bit of time to make. I feel like that was like my reasonable doubt, my blueprint. Like, I put a lot of work into that. You know, that's over, you know, that's some millions of streams in just strictly based off of, like, you know, just the promotion we put in. We did a whole little documentary, a short film to that. Mm -hmm. It's called uh, The Crown Fry Documentary. Uh, 
Yeah, so and two piece tape was like a prelude to that. I got like a whole little like prelude album little thing I've been doing with my uh discography, as you can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean they took they fucking my shit up, but <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I, I'm not an artist, so like I don't understand like how things like that end up happening. Because it should be pretty like you, you put call it in the album it should mm-hmm. just be in the album section, not like in the single EPs or the compilation tape mm-hmm. album either. You know what you I'm saying? It? Crown yeah, Fried. Crown Fried right but there. But I guess it stands out. It does because it's like it's by itself. Right, it's by itself. <laughs> it's but... by itself. But you mentioned so you talked about like one of the last records that we got to you know hear from Steez. You know, of course, Long Live Steez. Mm-hmm. And it's always interesting because like I. I like talking about like these type of things because I find it interesting because you know we talk about like pop now, right? Mm-hmm. Talk about like what how pop smokes music is kind of still being circulated and and whatnot in the good and the bad ways. But like I feel like the people around Seas and how the music that has come out since his passing, I feel like y'all have done it a very good job of like doing it justice. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like in, in in a good way. You know what I'm saying? Word, yeah. I mean, yeah. Shout out to Steez. I mean, I'm always. I always say like it's about like keeping his name alive. Of course. Like, whatever I do. Even with this next project training too, I have a, a track called Spirit of Steez. You know, just being like a spirit medium, just just speaking how I feel like he would speak in these days, you know, just keeping his name alive, keeping his 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 aura alive, just that was an MC. That was a thinker. That was a, a man that changed my life, you know, spiritually. Just putting me on to certain information that just led me to dig deeper into things mm. and just uh, challenged me to become a better person, you know. So uh, I know he's affected a lot of people in the world as well. So I just want to make sure he's honored. Spirit of Seas on Training 2. Training 2. Is, is, is it like you, you said it's you said it would be like if he was talking today, that song? Yeah. So like in like a sim- is it kind of like in a similar way to what like Kendrick did with like the Nipsey part on the heart part five or yeah, it's similar. Different? It's similar, but it, it's different. You know, it's 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 dime. It's very much dime, but mm. it's like embodying a uh, a new school version. Like if gotcha. he was to be spitting on something like newer, you know. Okay. I yeah, kind of revisit it. some of the lines from his past. You know, rhymes like he has a a line. And the cipher that we did called the, the Splitter Spitters back in the mm-hmm. day. And um, he said, uh, I was told that women would come with age and bitches would come with fame. The difference is nothing changed. So, like, that's how I started the rap, uh, the song off. Well, that's tough. You know, so, like, that was a line that stood out to me from him so it was like certain things that he said, some certain things that I feel like he would say on a, a new track. I put on there, so it was just like just a, a homage to Steve's, you know. That's dope. You said he opened your mind to like different things in the sense of like things you thought about, right? Yeah. What was like one thing um, that you could think of? I mean, specifically, I could say you know, sp- spirit science is the first thing that comes to my mind. Spirit science. Spirit science. What was that? Um, well, <laughs> oh, what's a simple definition of it? I guess because I, I feel like there's a long definition of it. Uh, yeah. I mean, just to. Uh, just the, just the, just diving into the spiritual aspect of you. You know, we we are souls and bodies. You know, we are souls. Ultimately, we are a soul. Our body is just you know right. we're you know vessels. You know, so it's just digging deeper into that and uh, the chakra system and uh, meditation and the uh, flower of life. You know, things, these are like key words that he would speak to me and I just dig deeper into, mm-hmm. you know. So these are things that he made me think about just by just speaking about them. Like, uh, yeah, and he just believed that us as East Coast, Beast Coast artists right. uh, could really make a change and be really, uh, really affect the world in like a real way, mm-hmm. in a real way, like, you know. Bigger than the government type shit. Right, right. That's yeah. dope. Long list these. Yes, so sir. with this project, so training two. Why did you want to make this one a, a a sequel? Why did you want to do a sequel this time with this? I mean, like I said, with the consistency, just like you, you know, like the shit don't change. Just like Ghetto Olympics. It was a Ghetto Olympics one. It was a Ghetto Olympics two. I feel like the word Ghetto Olympics in the whole term 
I mean, the term Ghetto Olympics is like, <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, it's like an everyday struggle within like our lives as people from where we come from. And it's like every day we train as hard as an Olympian would to gain or to uh, achieve our goals. So mm -hmm. it's like we out here, you know, in this Ghetto Olympics and we're trying to win. So, you know, with training, it's like we got to train to win that Ghetto Olympics, you know. Every mm -hmm. uh, consistent project we put out, every, you know, effort that we put out into the world, I feel like if we're not stopping and being stagnant, we're just pushing forward to something better. Just so that's why I say I respect what you do because mm, it's like you. it's like it's nothing but more levels, you know. So training too is just like it's, it's a never ending thing. I don't know if I'll do a Ghetto Olympics three, but um, I do Hopefully. have a pro I do have a project in mind called uh, World Domination or Domination because I feel like you know. The next level for me is just self mastery, mm -hmm. you know. And world domination is not necessarily, you know, just trying to take over the world, but it's like, just like in a recent uh, song with Kendrick, he was just like, you know, you can't change the world unless you change yourself, you know. Some Biggie shit, uh, Biggie Diddy shit, you can't change the world unless you change yourself. So, mm -hmm. gotta make changes within myself and better myself in order to, you know, dominate. <laughs> Who is gonna be on this project with you? This one? Yeah. Who's on this? Oh well, I gotta. You can say because this is coming out the week that it comes out. So. Right, 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 right. Uh, well, I got this posse cut called Players Only. Mm. It's featuring Stro. Uh, some people may know him as the astronomical kid mm -hmm. he, from uh, America's Got Talent. He's all grown up. He's been doing his thing for a few years now. Fire MC. Uh, players Only. He's on Players Only. Also, Daylight. Dope. Battle Rapper. Le battle Rap Legend. Watts, California. LMC, one of my good people. We stay in contact often. Cool guy. Smart dude. Rome Streets. Love Rome Streets. Love Rome Streets. Griselda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Uh, one of my longtime guys, too. Uh, great MC. Bars, uh, my guy Don Michael. He's from Harlem. Il, Il guy. Of course, Don Michael's been on the show. Before. Oh yeah, he's been on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see him up here going in, sweating, sweating, <laughs> sweating. <laughs> sweating. Literally, Killing I was like, it. damn. I'm like, I don't want to interrupt him, but bro, <laughs> like, I wanted to like toss him a towel from the sideline, be like, you know, like on some on some crazy passion. <laughs> he was killing that shit. I ain't gonna lie. That's that passion. So yeah, man. So he they're on that project. Um yeah, man, but it's mostly just me just on my my practice, on my training shit, just you know, preparing for the pre preparing for greatness, training mm -hmm. for greatness. So you <laughs> feel like you're preparing for something else? Oh yeah, it's always more. Mm -hmm. It's always better. It has been. Right. It hasn't gotten worse. Thank God. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? I mean Yeah. Yeah, but I don't feel like that's what life is about. I feel like even with if we feel like something is the worst situation, there's a is beauty within it. Mm -hmm. And what we take from it is gonna get us to our next level. Because even if that if we're in a fucked up situation and we're learning how to survive through it and we're not stopping, we're staying consistent within trying to live a, a better life, then we're keeping that shit going. It's like it can only get better. We're looking at it like, yo, you take a situation, you take a situation and you 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 take what you can from it to get to your next level. That's the that's like the the mantra for me. Take a situation, use what you can from it, take it to your next level. Go to the next level. I also saw so what was I I peeped this thing that you posted. It's the last post that you had on your gram. Mm -hmm. It was about Jack. Oh yeah, Jack Harlow. Shout out to Jack Harlow. So what? 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 Explain to me was that was you talking to Jack? Like, yeah. what, what kind of was going on there? Because I was trying to decipher it. I'm like, I think he's talking to him, but I wasn't entirely sure. Yeah, me and Jack Harlow. Um, back a few years ago, he hit me up. He was coming to New York. He was like, "Yo, bro, let's collab." This is like way before like he was really like out there. Mm. And you know that just goes back to you know just people crossing paths on their way up. You know just. 
he he just showed, was telling me just he he had uh was inspired and then and th- these are recent texts that he sent me just telling me like yo bro no bullshit like your song body on me inspired my my flow uh like period just on like my my first songs or like my songs to this day uh the way your rhyme scheme in that song kind of influenced how I started writing them mm-hmm. so I was just like oh that's really dope you know and he just was just paying homage through text. And I was just like, yo, that was a real honor. And just like I said today, like, mm-hmm. it's an honor to, to you know, inspire. So I just put that up and just like, yo, I'm proud of you. New album out. Everybody check it out. Word. Jack Harlow. Shout out to Jack Harlow. You got Drake on his album. Yeah. That's crazy. I remember listening to, like, older Jack Harlow. Mm-hmm. Like, I would say, like, maybe, I think when I first saw Jack Harlow, I want to say, like, four <laughs> ye- years ago, five maybe, like, right when he first got signed to drama. And, like, just kind of seeing, like, from then to now is kind of crazy. Yeah, I feel like he hit me before he uh, got signed to drama. So that was early. We never, like, got to link up. But, like, we ended up linking up, like, years later. Yeah. So. And he always shows love. So shout That's out fire. to Jack. You were also getting your acting bag a little bit. Oh, yeah. Wu-Tang. So. How'd that happen? Um, I auditioned. I killed that shit. That's it? It was just that simple? Yep. <laughs> a shout out to Innovative. I got an agency, you know, so I'm really in my acting bag. I'm a, a, a SAG, Astra, yeah. Union, you know, so, yeah. Uh, I actually just auditioned. Um, yeah, I auditioned like twice. Mm. They had a few roles. They had me auditioning to be Raekwon at one point. Really? Yeah, I didn't even know. But I feel like it was just like <laughs> just to test out like my rhyming skills mm-hmm. because and acting skills because they had parts. Like I didn't even realize it was Raekwon until I like really looked into it. I'm like, wait, these are Raekwon's lyrics right here that they got me spitting. And this part is because they had like the names are different in the show. Like Shotgun is fucking... Uh, a Method Man. Mm, and, it was like code names. Yeah, code right names. So like, I was reading the script. I was like, okay, maybe this is like Wu Tang universe characters. Like, I don't know these guys, but it was like fucking Raekwon and Ghostface and shit and uh fucking Method Man. So I tried out for some of those parts, but uh the part that they ultimately had me in, I was in episode six. I was mm. in a cipher. I ended up uh, being in a uh, Park Hill projects in Staten Island. Right. Uh. You know, I was rhyming in the... <laughs> okay, y'all could go watch it, Yeah, but... you could definitely go watch it. <laughs> definitely go watch it. Definitely go watch it. Yeah, because, uh, well, they'll be mad at me. Because a lot of people be mad at me because of that shit. But, it, like, it's real. I be feeling like fucking, uh, what's the nigga name? Tyreek from Power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometime niggas be acting like I actually <laughs> did, did that shit Yeah, you were actually life. your character? Yeah, man, but I guess that means I did a, you know... You did a good job. Because, like, when you, <laughs> like... What was I going to say about the acting? But it's like, it's weird because they're asking you to rhyme, bro. Like, you would think that's like, at least tell me who I'm trying to rhyme like so I could kind of like channel that energy. Yeah, I mean. But I, but I also get like the, the going in blind. They want to see if you could flow the way that they flow without even thinking about it type shit. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah, because, yeah, 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 they had a Raekwon verse in front of me. I like maybe five lines and it wasn't like connected. So I could then really like identify like what it was immediately. So I was like kind of just rhyming it like myself or just like, you know, so I didn't get it until like, I'm like, oh shit, they had me trying to be fucking. Break Kwan out here. <laughs> That's crazy. I don't know if I could have did it though. I, <laughs> hey, you never know. In, in an alternate universe somewhere, you played Ray Kwan on the show. You got to believe in myself. You got to. Yo, I could have did RZA though for sure. Oh yeah, I could, I could see. Oh, yeah, Hell I yeah, niggas be cutting your ass, Ashton. Yo, Ashton. Listen, I'm the voice of the people. Much love to everybody on the Wu Tang set. Everybody that put that shit together, but Ashton, yo, niggas is cutting your ass in the streets. Niggas hate you as Rizzo, bro. Niggas think your voice is crazy, bro. Like they they're annoyed by that shit. They're annoyed by it. The people are annoyed. They're very upset. <laughs> he said the people are annoyed. <laughs> they're upset. Season three, please sit down with Rizzo. Go to a dojo. Go to fucking uh, a samurai. Yo, sit in with that nigga. Sit on top of a mountain. Like that nigga. Uh, uh, what's the nigga name from fucking Snowfall? Be with Dubsy. Chill with that nigga like that. Get his accent right. Stop making him sound like that. that uh, via the people. <laughs> he said via the people. <laughs> nah, I honestly, when I first started the show, I was like, this isn't like 
bad, but like I, I see like as as it's it went not, on. It, I love the show. The show is great. Yeah. I was a part of it. Season two is great too. But then I, I I was in the room with RZA like a few weeks after the show premiered, and then I was like, oh, I see. I guess why people are saying this about him. Like I personally don't mind because I can I can allow my suspension of disbelief to like kind of you know right, yeah, just go along with the it. show. You can enjoy. But then it. like when I did meet RZA in person, yeah. I was like. <laughs> the cadence of the voice doesn't really match up the way that it probably should. Or like, the, like you know how like people like, um, uh, how do I, I don't know how to explain this. You know how like, okay, you know how like when, when Barack Obama was president, like you know like his speech pattern. It's like the speech pattern. Like the speech pattern doesn't Obama. match up the, it, that's what I was trying to say. The speech pattern doesn't match up like the same way as RZA in real life. Like the way that RZA does sen- like speaks in sentences isn't the same that how he speaks in sentences completely in the show. That's what I was trying to say. That shit is like Riz's like fucking imagination squared. He said, yo, let me get the illest actor in my eyes. You just play me. Like, fuck it. I don't even care if you sound like me like that. That nigga cool. I like him. He's like, he's like, what the movie he was in won an Oscar, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I think the movie won, he was in won an Oscar, but yeah, I get yeah, it. Yeah, Ashton Sins is a great actor. So are you gonna are you getting uh you got any more acting roles that you're working on right now? Uh yeah, I've auditioned for a few things, so okay. I'm gonna wait waiting to hear if things back, you know. And if I don't, I'll be acting in my own music videos or some right, shit. Right, training too, out June 10th. Yeah, man. He got, he got his own, <laughs> he got his own, you you got, you're acting some of your, your new vids that you got coming out? Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. I got some treatments. So, yeah, definitely rolling things out. I got a video coming uh, for the first joint on the project called Access, Access Granite. Dope. And, yeah, so I got a, a ride video treatment where I'm going to be acting in it. That's another track that's going to be on the album. Word. It was funny because when I was um like uh last week when I was like listening to your music right and I, like obviously I came across like the old track you had with Kehlani and it was funny because I, I hadn't heard that track in a, in a minute but I remember hearing that track because I was like one of Kehlani's biggest fans when I was coming up and it just I I was listening to it, I'm like damn like her harmonies in 2015 mm-hmm. used to be crazy oh, yeah. N- not super crazy about some of the new stuff I haven't listened to the new album I actually am gonna go listen to the new album on my way home today I did say I was gonna do that today but. I remember like back then how big of a fan I was like, and then like when I listened to it again, I was like, oh man, this this shit took me back. It was yeah. great record. Yeah, those were times, man. I remember that day that we did that record, so it was great. You know, um, we what were, was that day? I think we were in like like Beverly Hills. Oh, you um, was living your rich life. <laughs> <laughs> we were in Beverly Hills. I came out to <laughs> the West Coast, and she was out there writing for Atlantic. Mm. That was on Atlantic at the time. She was writing for like um, Kevin Gates. She was doing like hooks for Kevin Gates, like a bunch of like star projects. And I came out there. She was like, "Oh, you want to get in the stool?" Came out there, linked her. I remember just smoking one backwood, having a cool ass conversation with mm-hmm. her after finding the beat, of course, because we we sat down with these producers called the uh, Urban Rock Stars, the Urban Okay, yeah, 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 Urban Rock Stars, and yeah, they were up in the hills. Smoked a uh, backwood with her, cool ass convo, sat down, wrote, wrote together. And then um, there's a part in the song where we're like uh, doing like a phone conversation. Right. You guys are like talking like one person just landed, right? Or, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so you landed in Miami. Yep. Yep. I Miami. So like that part, we're actually like holding headphones together, like using one mic, holding headphones like head to head on some... <laughs> knocking that shit out at the same time. That's fire. I ain't gonna lie. That was a cool ass something cool special. Yeah, man. And that yeah, the part just came out so cool. And a lot of people connect with the song still. Mm-hmm. You know. So hopefully one day. I've always wanted. To, it was funny because before quarantine and all that, that was years ago when we did the record. Uh, she asked to do the video, but she was too busy. Her management said she was really too busy to do it, and um. I was like, yo, we should do some like Skype, FaceTime type shit, you know, before quarantine or anything like that. I was like, yo, let's do something like that. And they were just like, well, we would want her to be there for the video. Da, da, da. And I'm like, well, I went. Because you can't. You might as well just do right. it. Right. But like the, the Skype FaceTime thing isn't a bad idea in the vein of the video, especially if you guys shooting separate parts. Like Exactly. It, well, I mean, the, obviously y'all are on together on the Skype calls, but like if y'all shot some separate parts. Yeah, somebody was hating. Outside, wherever y'all was at. Somebody like, was hating. Somebody was hating. Somebody was hating. Somebody was hating. Somebody didn't want that record to happen. Now, they actually told me, the management told me, oh yeah, we think that uh, you guys should do another record in the future, but right now, 
Kalani's like doing a lot. Da, 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 da. So that classic ass record doesn't have a video because somebody hated it. So shout out to Kalani. But not the person who was hating. <laughs> but it's crazy how like how many big records be having like not having vids you know because like obviously the discourse now is about like the j cole no role model shit where it's like how's bro no role model still on the billboard charts all this time later we don't got a vid for it. it's like do we shoot a vid for it now or is it a little sensitive because of the jada and will thing like you know what i'm saying mm. but i i don't know i feel like artists should if like the song is dope and the song is big and still is big to this day and there's never been a vid i don't think that there's ever a wrong time to put out a video for it i think people not saying that like they're afraid on their side but like i think people just be like afraid to do videos for older songs because people yeah. be like, oh it's old but like yeah, don't definitely don't be jumping out the window on no cloud chasing shit yeah. but you know if it makes sense yeah you know you know it's the art you know just put your art out there people want to see it and people are going to appreciate it because 50 years from now nobody's going to know it came out fucking a year right after. nobody's gonna care we have like songs that blow up they're like songs that are from like five years ago that just blow up on tiktok tiktok every single day exactly and kids are like whoa have you heard this new song like right. bitch this shit been out for like five years and it's only gonna be gonna be more of that you right, know? At, right as we go on some shit can blow up tomorrow that came out 10 years ago and then they're oh they'll be like um they'll be like oh what's this and it's me watching a shanti song and you're just like <laughs> <laughs> you're like you're like that shit not new <laughs> that shit that shit a classic nigga. what do you mean so it's that's just how it is though Shanti's still out here young as fuck looking bad as fuck so right. it's like nigga that shit was yesterday <laughs> <laughs> nah she'll dead promote it like it was yesterday too if the song got hotter Shanti would be like I just dropped right. it <laughs> <laughs> that let all the kids start going crazy but art is subjective so it is what it is it's all art man as we go forward so are you working on anything else this year um World domination. World domination. domination. That 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 you've been talking about it. That's gonna be right after this. I'm yes, assuming. sir. Yes, sir. Dope. Um, ghetto Olympics. Um, three. I'll, I don't know about three, but I definitely want to do some like uh, events or uh, based around the concept. That would be really cool to. That would be fire. Yeah, to have like a monthly kind of thing where we we do like Ghetto Olympics games. You know, I still got the merch. You know, uh, that's going crazy. Uh. Want to be on my acting shit still, still doing my auditions. Want to tour, definitely. I would love to hop on a, a dope acts tour that nice. uh, a well-respected uh, MC artist, a uh, performer. Because I feel like, uh, yeah, man, I'm just as good. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> so, you know, to jump on the stage, I feel like performing is definitely uh, my, my high point, too. So it was like to get on the stage and just really... Get involved with the with the crowds again. Mm -hmm. and, you know, quarantine really slowed things down too. Like I was doing a lot of shows, and then that kind of fell back. So now, I'm trying to get on the road, like do some real touring. Word, coming soon, hopefully. Hell yeah, hopefully. Manifesting that, gotta stay consistent with it. Right, but in the meantime, <laughs> training too. Training too. June tenth. Make sure you go get that. Go run up his freestyle. That's out now. Yes, um, yes, yes. Before yes. we sign off, let the people know they can follow you at anything else you want to let them know. This is your camera right here. It's Dama Dozen, Crown Heights, Brooklyn. You can follow me on IG. That is D Y M E A D U Z I N Dama Dozen. Also on Twitter, the same thing. I also have a website. It's called DimeNYC.com. That's D-Y-M-E-N-Y-C.com. Thank you guys so much. Sheesh! Diamond Dozen on the radar. Go run up that freestyle. Go run up the album. June 10th. Training. training. Two. Training two. Go show him love. Go follow him. Support is free. Love is free. Till next time. It's on the radar, baby. My God, I appreciate you. Love.